Hey, Lightbox, welcome to the Social Media for Artists panel presented by DeviantArt. Today, we're going to be talking about something that every artist uses nowadays, social media. We're going to give you not only actionable things that you can do, but also some things that you can do to help yourself stay mentally healthy, some things that you can do to help promote your art, and just an overall philosophy from some of the best artists out there on social media. So today, I'm really excited to bring you some excellent guests. But first off, you're probably wondering who I am. My name is Matt Buholtz. I'm going to be your moderator today. You may know me as Gigi Matt B. I'm head of social for DeviantArt. And I'm thrilled to bring you the following panelists. So we're just going to go ahead and have them all introduce themselves. And uh, Arjun, I'm going to start with you. Sure. Hey, my name is Stanley Lau, but most people know me as Arjun. Um, I'm a digital artist from Singapore. So um, yeah, good to have you. Good to have myself here. And thank you for DeviantArt for having me. Of course. Yeah. And Lara? Uh, hi, um, literally my cat just pops in right now. Very great moment. Uh, I am Laura, uh, mostly known as Siren online. Uh, I'm a digital artist, uh, illustrator kind of person. I don't know what to call myself, but that's it. <laughs> Thank you for having me as well. Excited to be here. Awesome. <laughs> and Javi. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Javi. I am a comic artist and illustrator, currently working freelance and on my webtoon. And I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. This is such a great panel. Thank you so much for making the time to join us today. I'm thrilled to have all of you from all across the globe. Uh, this is a very fun time to be in a digital time where we can do things like this. So let's start off. When you first hear the term social media, what's your immediate reaction? How, how does that make you feel? And anyone can just jump in on this. Ooh, it's a tough one. Um... Social media makes me, oh, I don't know, like every time I have a conversation with somebody that isn't like on social media, I'm always a little bit hesitant on, to share what I do with it because people quite quickly have their opinions on it. And it has a bit of a negative rep, especially now people are like, oh, I need to take so much time away from it. But that's really stupid because ultimately social media has brought me so many really lovely things. And it's, it's really like obviously it's where my career is and started and uh, it's where I met most of my friends and now I get the joy of talking to some artists that I really look up to so uh, yeah it's it's a, a wonderful place. <laughs> I was born with the in the era that was without social media there wasn't even internet so social media is kind of a, kind of a new thing for me. Um, um, but I enjoy it as a way to catch up with friends, but as a career, as an artist, I think this is also a pretty vital tool to, to connect with fans and, and clients and customers and just build your fan base. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I agree with both of you, like my career really wouldn't be anywhere uh, without social media. I kind of see it like as a platform where people who have similar interests can sort of come together and talk about it and you know engage with those interests. Uh, like I, when I think of social media, I mainly think of our our community, and it's been like a fantastic place to grow and throughout the years. Yeah, yeah I, I think that I think that so many people hear it, and it can be so intimidating. And there's a lot to social media, uh, depending on your platform, what you're putting out there. You know, are you a brand on it, or are you using it as a portfolio? There's so much that goes into it. So I think having all of your perspectives on it are really going to help people watching. You know, kind of understand it for what it might be to them. So let's talk about: Do you feel that social media is essential for artists? And why? Like, I mean, obviously we hit on some of that just now, but like, what do you think specifically really benefits an artist on social media? So Javi, let's start with you. Um, I think social media is especially important for artists like me who aren't based in the US. Like I know before social media came around, like the main uh, thing that people used to network was like going to conventions and like meeting people in person, which is like really hard for someone like me, like especially like for financial reasons and because of like, it's really hard to get a visa to the US. So um, social media sort of bypasses that whole thing. Like uh, it's it's so amazing like if I post my art on Twitter or Instagram and if someone from Craft Network just sees it and if they think that it's, it's going to be a good fit for something that they have in mind they can just like send you an email and something that like that wouldn't really have been possible a couple of years back 
So I think, yeah, it's, it, it is really important for artists. I, I mean, it has been really important for me in that respect. Yeah, the same for me. I am also not in, oh, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll make this quick. I am, um, I'm also in Europe, so uh, I can't attend conventions or build a network anywhere else. So in a professional sense, that's definitely the, the case, but also in a, a personal sense, for me at least, I don't have a traditional art education. So huge imposter syndrome uh, accompanies with that, of course. But also um, I have been able to access so many resources and get feedback from peers that I would normally get through art school. Um, and that has been immeasurable in terms of value for me. Um, and I still feel like, you know, obviously with my platform, people assume like, oh yeah, professional, but at the same time, I'm still a student. In, like everybody's still a student, like as long as they live, obviously. But that connection with other people online and being able to work is, is fantastic through social media. I think it's essential not only to make money, but also to grow at this point. Um, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with both of you. Uh, I, I think that social media is uh, somehow make art much more accessible. Um, that uh, whatever you do, um, in the past, I can only show it to my family, my siblings, but now I can, it, it can be seen by, by people across the world. Um, and I think this is a very powerful tool for artists to, to, to have that, that audience that, that they look for. Art with the audience really means very little. So especially for commercial artists, um, we have a chance to expand our, our clientele because of social media. People knock onto our doors, I mean, virtually uh, because of social media. So get, and I get to meet really a lot of friends, um, people that I don't, or I couldn't even meet face to face. We managed to collaborate, to work on the same project, even work together under the same company. Uh, I think that's, that's a very exciting things to do. Although it can be really overwhelming, but I do see the positives of social media a lot. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to add to that. Uh, sorry, sorry go on. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, um, especially the uh, when you mentioned not being in the US, that's a huge part. But also just in general, you can really make your own like career. You can really make it without having any resources, um, mm. especially like some of my friends in Brazil probably Piccolo, yeah, people know him. He doesn't mm -hmm. have anything, like there's no real good art schools there. I didn't have access to the art schools that we have, um, even though there are quite good art schools in the Netherlands, but um, it's like the internet completely bypasses that. And if you have enough drive, if you have the motivation and the talent and, well, talent, um, you, can, you can really, make it in the art world nowadays and that's that's solely thanks to social media that wouldn't be a thing without it so yeah mm -hmm. it's it's really cool <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. sorry Jenny, yeah i was gonna say like say? <laughs> uh as a small baby artist when i first started drawing um and especially i used to draw anime most of all i didn't really have that community around me who was also into anime so uh, social media was like really integral in getting me into becoming like an artist professionally to begin with because I feel like if I didn't have that uh, initial community around me who like uh, made me improve and do better and stuff like that I really don't think I would have been on the path to become professional at the end of the day. Hmm. Yeah so let's talk about that a little bit like I think uh, Arjun on another panel that we did in San Diego, you once said that your first social media was like your mom's fridge, right? Like a place where, you know, you yeah. could have stuff seen real easily. So where for everyone was kind of like the first step that you took into for social media for your art? How did you first start like kind of putting your art out there? You know, whether where that was, how that was, what steps you were taking to like kind of hope to do with it? What were those initial thoughts for you around social media and art? I can answer that first. Um, to be honest, DeviantArt was my first social media before the term social media even exists. Yeah, so that was the only mm -hmm. community I post my art. I remember signing up for, for the account on DA and then posted everything that I have in my hard drive. I, I love Pepper artworks back then. Like overnight, I uploaded like 20 of them. And, and that's how I started my so-called my social media because that's really interactive. I people commenting on it and uh, favorite my art and 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 a lot of dialogue session. And one thing I really like about Devela, at least back then, was everybody seems equal. There's no fancy 
cover photo for for your account. Yeah. Everybody just like similar. So if it makes no matter what level you're at, it makes things really approachable. So I really like that. Um, so that's how it started, and then eventually got onto Facebook naturally, um, and then move onto Instagram and and then Twitter. So pretty standard stuff. Um, I do see the strength in different platforms and and uh, and different demographics to reach out to. So I think that's that's how it started. Yeah, I started with DeviantArt as well. Um, and I always, I mean, I started when I was like 11 and I think I was uploading photos because I didn't know that I was gonna be like drawing for a living. I, I didn't even have a tablet when I signed up. Uh, my dad even made an account just to comment on my, uh, my posts on there. <laughs> I still I think it still exists technically so it's a legacy but uh the uh yeah the platform on DeviantArt I think it was so so valuable especially the groups and stuff you know there was no um it really had like little hubs of communities of interest and that's what I really liked it wasn't based on algorithms but it was really based on actively searching for people that shared similar interest in back in that like initial stage of the internet and then I also moved on to traditional social media. I think speaking about what social media is for and what we said earlier about um, the community part and the growing part and the learning part versus finding clientele. And um, like, especially if your art is uh, also direct to consumer versus, you know, trying to get in touch with people that might be at studios or might hire you for other projects. That's all on like traditional social media for sure. But I feel like DeviantArt and things like even back in the day, Pagey World and um, what was it? Art Amino, stuff like that. I know that that's where a lot of people start because it really is about that, like making friends and, and finding a community. Yeah, I was 11 and I wanted to post my art on DeviantArt, but I think uh, you're not supposed to make a DeviantArt account until, until you're 13. And I took that very seriously. I got scared. I thought I'd get arrested <laughs> for having a DeviantArt account at 11. Uh, so um, I asked one of my friends who's a bit older. I told her to make a, make an account for me. And she did that. And I used to give my art to her on a USB. And then she used to upload it for me. And it was basically just like the dumbest uh, MS Paint Naruto drawings and comics and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but oh. yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that. Yeah. Yeah. I actually I'm pretty don't sure. have them anymore. It's very sad. Uh, I uh, suspended that account or deactivated or whatever because I was so embarrassed of it. And I'm so dumb that I didn't save any of that work. Uh, <laughs> all my old deviations are gone too, I think. They used to be uh, like, um, what's it called? Um, archived, but I don't think mm -hmm. I can access them anymore. I had this, I, I used to do this thing where on Google, I would Google manga vampire and then like to just to redraw it on the hugest paper, oh. like never <laughs> finishing any of it. It was, <laughs> I'm pretty sure your drawings must have shown up as well. So yeah, I was just copying mm -hmm. it and trying to, to be oh. like the other artist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's amazing. Uh, we're totally going to strike any account that we find from 11 year olds. Uh, so I like that you had kind of the secret handoff of like, hey, you got the artwork. Yeah, yeah here you go. <laughs> like the handshake. With yeah. The yeah. In a back alley at the school. <laughs> oh, the age limit to apply. <laughs> yeah, uh, the COPA says you have to be over 13 to be on the internet. That's why oh, almost all sites okay. have that. Yeah, it's you okay. know protecting protecting youth. You know, there's a, a lot of stuff out there. So you guys are sure missing out safe. on so much MS Paint artwork from 11 year olds. <laughs> we need to review that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, oh we'll talk to the inter internet legal authorities yeah. <laughs> and see if we can get it shut down. <laughs> so uh, for, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for social media, uh, I, I want to ask something that I see people always dealing with is do you feel that like, you have to create art specifically for social media nowadays. Do, when you create something, are you creating for you or are you creating with that in the back of your mind that you need to put something out that will either get traction or do well for your audience? What sort of pressures do you feel from social media? It's a job. I just see like, I'm Laura, Siren is the job. Um, 
So every post that I do has like, even if I'm not getting paid to make it, it has a purpose. It's marketing. It's, um, uh, it's showing my skills. It's improving myself in some sort of way. So yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's creating within certain boundaries, but I find that that's where I thrive because mm. I'm not like, I wouldn't describe myself as a true artist. Like I try, I try to strive for that ideal, but you are a designer in a lot of ways and if I'm designing for the siren brand so to speak then you know there's guidelines and there's things to do so that I know where to go so I yeah I, I do but I don't mind it it's not like a pressure necessarily as it is a mm -hmm. just a clear guideline for me I like it mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah for me I I kind of agree in a way but at the same time because I I always advise my students to, to draw what they love. I think that's the most important thing to enjoy the, the process and, and have passion in what you're doing. I think I'm just a bit more fortunate that the things I am into is something that people tend to like in general, for example, the pop culture stuff, the anime, the games, the, the comic stuff. So when I draw something that I truly enjoy, it's also something that people can resonate very easily. Um, um, so do I actually make something in specific for social media? Sometimes I do. Um, I always have a, a, a list of things that I, I would think about when I make something for social media. Uh, and it's the same pointers that I give it to my student. Uh, for example, we make something that's uh, trending. So if there's something is trending, it's, it's kind of a, a natural thing for you to draw something related to that. And then something that's funny and cute. So people like to share cute stuff and funny stuff. And then there'll be things like uh, educational stuff. So if you can create something, a post that is more educational, like do this, don't do that, uh, the quick tips of how to draw something, I think that would be really useful. And then of course, there's something that's nostalgic. So if you tap into something, people's nostalgia to rekindle their old love of some of the characters, I think we tend to trend a lot more. But so I, I, I do consider those factors when I try to draw something for social media. Uh, for me, like uh, when I was first uh, starting to build up my social media presence, uh, yes, I used to uh, think about stuff that would trend quite a bit. Like uh, I used to draw a lot of fan art, um, stuff that, that was trending at the time, fandoms that were trending. And it really helped me solidify my initial uh, couple thousand followers. And then I could just post whatever I wanted. And um, even now, yeah, I, I definitely think about it. Like uh, Disney trends a lot. Uh, Nintendo art trends a lot. You know, uh, Marvel DC trends a lot. Uh, uh, and it's really great to draw those things if uh, you want that boost uh, of visibility. And, um, but yeah, uh, these days I'm not really getting most of my work through social media. It's more like uh, more traditional work. So I'm not really focused on it at the moment, but otherwise, yeah. And, you know, honestly, ironically, uh, drawings that I have drawn for the sole purpose of like, oh, I want to get likes on this. Those have not done nearly as well as artwork that I've drawn, like, from my heart. <laughs> like, uh, I'd have this series of um, supermarket drawings that I draw very tiny details on. And I, I never drew those uh, thinking that, oh, these are going to, like, do well. People are going to like those. I just drew them because I wanted to. And ironically, mm -hmm. those did the best out of everything I've drawn. So, yeah, um, you should have, like, a healthy balance between stuff that you draw for likes and stuff and to get more visibility on your work and stuff that you draw because you love that thing and you want to draw it. Mm -hmm. Also, I think in general, I agree. Like, you should always draw what you want. But mm -hmm. I mean, if you like it, mm -hmm. there's people out there that like what you like. So exactly, you know, then like it's it's a brand thing, and it's like it's it's a conscious choice to have a certain kind of brand. So it's always from your own interests, I suppose. But yeah, it's unpredictable. You never know. Like I was mm -hmm. sure, like I, I posted something a little bit spicier, and I was sure that it wasn't gonna do as well. But it had like the most likes I had in a while so I was like okay fine I guess you guys are just it's been a long lockdown I suppose <laughs> but uh <laughs> no nah, you can't you can't predict what's going to work and what isn't going to work but consistency is important I think as well like if you are going to be um you know it's it's good to experiment and I I think that's what people appreciate from my end as well as like that I don't really um, I mean, I, I do definitely have like my set topics that I like and that I'm known for, but um, the consistency is is something that people come back for and uh, will keep following you for and keep recognizing your art for as well. So, 
yeah, just drawing what you like and what you enjoy. Mm -hmm. It usually just comes naturally and works uh, yeah. for the algorithm. <laughs> yeah, I really agree. And I think that's one thing I always remind myself that even though sometimes just drawing things for, for the trend or, or for, for something that's hot now, I think I always like to use that as a platform for myself to grow a little bit as an artist. That means I may try to interpret it in a way that I may not have done that before, or so that there's a little personal push to my artistic skills, yeah. I think that you guys really are touching on a lot of great things because you need that passion in what you put out. People can obviously feel it. That's, you know, something that they can relate to. And like you said, there is a certain level of marketing and branding that goes into it. You know, mm -hmm. defining yourself and your tone and your voice is very important. So as artists, there are many skill sets that you need when you start branching into the social media side outside of just the mechanical drawing or illustrating or painting or sculpting or whatever art you do. Like when it comes to communicating with your audience, what sort of uh, learnings have you gotten from how you even like add text to your art? Like how do you caption it? Or when do you put up a post that is not even including art? What sort of things have you found there? I've got my personal side of things, but I find that the more that I share my authentic self, the more people know who I am. Like there is a huge benefit to being authentic and sharing your personality because that's something that people relate to. And I used to do that because when I started on social media, it wasn't with the intent to, to make a living off of it or to be a brand. It was just to be myself and to make friends. So there is a lot of stuff, you know, that, you know, I was, I was a teenager. I was like 15, 16 when I started getting my first followers and, and that sort of stuff. And it was all through friendship, but then like quite quickly, there was an audience that was looking in as well. I think the more you share your authentic self, the more you're going to be affected by people saying negative stuff potentially. So there's, you have to kind of be aware of whether you want that or not, because if you put up a persona, if you're a completely different person on the internet, like anything that people say about you or judge you for or whatever is not going to hit you because you're like, that's, that's not me. But mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard because um, people do, people aren't stupid. Like people sometimes describe audiences as like, they will do anything because they look up to you so much, but I have a completely different experience. My audience is very um, respectful, critical. And I find that they are, really kind to me but they're they're definitely like people that I respect equally mutually back like I have very um like occasionally there will be a person that doesn't have that sort of level of communication with me and they are like definitely more on the the fangirly or fanboy sort of like side of things but most of the time I find that I'm more talking to peers um which I'm very fortunate for um and I don't know it's hard because then I want to be my authentic self, but I'm also really wary of like oversharing the process and oversharing like potentially negative stuff about um, the creation process and being an artist on the internet because, you know, it's it's not something that I want to weigh them down with. And there's so much context to it that they are never going to completely understand because they don't know who I am as a person. So it's a it's a tricky balance, I find. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I know as I mean, I, I believe in being authentic and I do not separate my art life and my personal life. Um, mm -hmm. But I do know that sometimes you have to draw certain boundaries. So as what you say, Sarin, um, when, when you want to share something negative or your personal struggle, sometimes people don't take it too well and, and uh, you may you may get past the first time or second time, then slowly, if you keep doing that, eventually people will just go, they just don't like those negative vibe things. So you do need to, I mean, I personally think that I need to show some certain boundaries. So my post is still consider mostly positive and uh, I will leave my struggle to, to my personal self. Um, that's why I try to draw the lines. Um, but in terms of how, how I'm going to like describe my post and stuff, I, I, I hope that I, I can generate certain conversations. So sometimes I, when I post something, even though it's not really art, art related, um, I will try to initiate some kind of conversation. Like, what do you guys think? Uh, 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 how about this, something that I've done uh, many years ago and 
do you still like it? Or, or when I do some redraw on my old works. So that's something that actually sparked the conversations and keep, keep the engagement going. I think uh, normally I do think a lot about the caption, like it, if it is something that I want a lot of interaction with, normally what really helps the algorithm, especially on Twitter and I guess Instagram to a certain extent, is if you ask a question in the caption, like I will literally sometimes just post two versions of the same thing and be like, which one do you guys like better? And people mm -hmm. like... Uh, yeah giving their own input on certain things so they will interact with that post quite a bit and at the same time i'm getting that input so i know what to do with that thing that i'm asking a question about um but other than that um recently i drew a sketch of the, it was just like a black and white sketch of this girl sitting alone at a cafe looking sad and mm -hmm. i was gonna post it just with the caption going like girl at cafe or something dumb like that and then at the last minute i change the caption and my husband was like oh my god why did you post such a stupid caption and I was like no just just you wait and I <laughs> and the caption that I wrote was oh um her she got stood up by her date and everyone who saw that drawing felt so sad for her they started drawing their own characters going on a date with my character and it was like a mini meme with my followers so and I wouldn't <laughs> have gotten that same level of interaction had I just left the caption blank or said something you know generic so yeah you can use your caption to your advantage majority of the time yeah Do, you don't really share a lot of like um personal stuff besides artwork right you kind of you have like your work very much at the forefront yeah. of your brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it... I usually just, um, I would, I just share art and then maybe like a meme or two pictures of my cat, maybe like a big event. Like I, when I got married, I shared a few pictures of that. But other than that, yeah, it's basically just like, I will never like go on Twitter and be like, oh, I'm feeling sad about so-and-so, like something like this has happened. I feel like you should uh, maintain that boundary with your um, audience um so yeah it's tough though because I I feel like that I that's what I do more like recently but before um before I really took the more professional approach with my social media I I definitely used it to relate to other people and to to be able to have more difficult conversations about like the side of art that isn't like visible in the art pieces itself and a lot of people do appreciate that so there's like yeah. there's always like the tempted side the tempting side of like being like sharing that sort of thing and like being candid and sharing that sort of stuff with your followers but yeah it's it's tough because I, lately I've been less you know interested in doing that especially now with you know the the crazy things that are going on in the world it just feels so mm -hmm. small and insignificant but People still go through that every day. And I feel like with all the like the noise about the really big stuff, we forget that the small stuff is also affect, affecting us in a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm mm -hmm. still not entirely sure nowadays, like if I prefer to keep my caption short, because sometimes with art as well, like you can write a whole caption, like this is what I did. I struggled with this part of the drawing and then it turned out really good or something like that. But sometimes I'm just tempted to like post a, a sketch and be like little doodle. Or like, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Like that sort of thing. She got stood up by her date or like, yeah. this burger sucks. Like something like that. And I feel like that's, that's really, like that's funny. And like sometimes that does really well on social media as well. I feel like sometimes really long captions. And this mm -hmm. is a really tough one with friends where they're like, oh, we want this and this and this in the caption. And you need uh -huh. to use this hashtag and that hashtag and that hashtag. And you need to tag this account. Oh God, I'm like, that it's doesn't so work. hard. You yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so hard to mm -hmm. tell them like, no, if I cram all this stuff in the caption, people are not going to read it. They're just going to scroll by because no one wants exactly. to see all the text. Yeah, yeah, I've had a few collaborations with brands and I'm like, okay if you say so I've like I've tried to nudge them in the right direction and I'll be like mm. the more hashtags I'm putting in there the less reach this is going to get like yeah. I can put that this is sponsored an advertisement for your brand in like a natural way but if I'm using hashtag spawn hashtag ad hashtag contest hashtag mm -hmm. whatever like you're going to get drowned by the algorithm yeah. and they're like no we have to do that and I'm like what? <laughs> <laughs> but fine if you want if you want a thousand likes on your post instead of the possible 10k that you could get like whatever <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. 
It's a, I don't know it's how many people found this panel from the social post that said, watch the Lightbox panel, social media for artists, hashtag Lightbox, hashtag DeviantArt, hashtag <laughs> panel, hashtag everyone loves us, uh, hashtag sponsored. Um, yeah. like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe, maybe somebody is looking through the hashtag ad right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> who, who that's that's my favorite one to ad. click. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's the most inspiring one. <laughs> yeah, plus, yeah. Uh, I, th I think si I think Sirene, uh, when you come back to your idea of how much you, you should share your personal stuff to social media, I think as you go on more with the social media, as you spend like a decade on social media, your heart gets stronger. So uh, yeah. I think you get to take the the negative stuff or try to ignore the negative side or people who jump in the conclusion and just brush it off. I think if you get that kind of uh, strength in your heart i think it's okay for you to share whatever that you like yeah mm. absolutely yeah and there's mm. there's a huge value to having that community and i feel like i'm i'm kind of happy with that balance now like there was definitely a moment like at the beginning of my my social media career when i was a teenager like i was sensitive but i was sharing a lot of stuff and i was happy to have that community and then like i made that transition into becoming an adult and now mm -hmm. i'm in my 20s and um like there was in my early 20s as well like there was like the transition like 19 20 that's where yeah. I started to go like oh shit do I need to like be this like stoic brand all of a sudden but that was mm -hmm. such a, a sudden shift that it wouldn't have been natural so I'm trying to balance it nowadays but I don't think there's like a, a go-to must like what you can share and what you can't share I think mm -hmm. there is value in both sides being professional and like um, very methodical or like just like let the artwork speak for itself but mm -hmm. I think there's a huge value in like sharing the more personal side of things as well I, I get a lot of positive feedback on like you always are so personable and like you're happy to talk and um, I try to like you know there's there's always that complicated like uh, parasocial relationship but that's mm -hmm. something that I respect as well I'm like I'm not your friend I'm I'm a person and you don't know who I am but mm -hmm. that's also something that most people do appreciate is that they're like yeah I'm, you're talking to me like a professional but you know you're also a person and I respect that boundary and the distance between us so thankfully my audience is older as well I don't really have yeah. a lot of young followers so that's uh, that really helps I think excellent mm -hmm. So yeah. talking about like the more polished, like personal versus brand, how do you all feel about that in the art sense? Do you, on your social media, do you only put the most polished pieces? And do you also put up works in progress? What, what have you found works for you? And do you think that there's positive or negatives to either side? Archer, okay. I see, I see you yeah. thinking so, on it, yeah. <laughs> So let, let, yeah. let me answer that. Um, um, I think that's, that's value in both. Um, I always believe that in, when it comes to social media, uh, consistency and regularity is very important. So you have to post regularly so that people get used to looking at your stuff on a daily basis. So, um, and I also find that sometimes my rough stuff get, get uh, respond a lot better than my polished stuff. And you know, sometimes when you draw something especially digitally, digitally and you make something really polished, it's hard for the audience, especially the younger ones, to imagine themselves reaching that level. But you can post something rough, it seems achievable. It seems that, oh yeah, I think I can do a bit of that. I think, yeah. So I think that also have its own charm. And, and sometimes people just want to see that you don't just click a button on Photoshop and everything just done. They want to see the progress that you have uh, and the rough stuff actually uh, help you uh, bring bring the idea across. I think that's that's very useful. I want to speak to this one, like from the perspective of an artist and as a viewer. Like as an artist, I still struggle with that thing. I still view a Twitter and Instagram as my art gallery, and that I need to only post like the best of my work or and stuff mm. like that. And it's hard to be like, okay, yeah, I can just throw on this random sketch on there, and you know, people are gonna like that. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like I have high expectations of myself. But on the contrary, as a viewer, I love seeing people's like sketchy work, like, you know, um, them breaking them uh, their process down because like I learn a lot from that and also like dispels this myth that every artist is perfect 24 seven. Like some days you have your off days where you can kind of draw a thing and you draw all these like shitty sketches and stuff like that, but they still have value. And I love seeing that from other people. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I, I relate to both of that. Um, I used to post so much. I used to post once every day, sometimes twice a day. And I tried to color and render and all that sort of stuff. That definitely helped back in the day when the algorithm kind of boosted activity more than anything. Um, but nowadays, I think I've toned it down a little bit more because I just, I don't really care that much about like always putting out stuff like, and I'm really lucky and fortunate that, you know, I have an audience that I worked really hard for, but I don't have to, like, I'm not looking like to reach new milestones constantly. I have too many followers to keep up with to begin with. Like all of those people, I just want to make them happy and make work that they follow me for. Um, and I want to give back to that community that I already have around me. So I feel less pressure to to constantly put out and that helps me to only put out stuff that I am genuinely proud of um, and I can I can work like for a while on a piece and keep it in my gallery like most of the time stuff that I post I haven't finished on that day like every now and then there will be a post but people all, all uh, will always know because it will be like in the middle of the night when I finish rendering something I'm like I just want to post this I'm so happy with this but if it's something that I'm posting like at a, a more reasonable hour most of the time it's been done for like a week or so and I just mm -hmm. go all right here we go uh, I'm finally ready to post it um, and I'm not really as active anymore because of that but I don't really mind and I think you know, with the algorithms constantly changing anyway, for me, like right now, I have that luxury of not having to keep up with it as much anymore, which is such a relief because I cannot imagine having to compete with, um, you know, the, the current market and the amount of posts that are currently being put out. Like it's, it's unnatural and it's not something that any artist should be able to expect from themselves. Um, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous to expect to be drawing something every day and the people who do, um, I think they're gonna they're gonna really suffer from it in terms of the quality of their work, um, and it's silly because you know it's it sets unrealistic expectations for commissioners. It sets unrealistic expectations for mm -hmm. um, for the audience um, in terms of you know what is going to keep up, and it's just going to work people into a really like quick burnout and. That's something that I find, like, that's something that I take pride in. I don't really suffer from because of my own healthy boundaries with, like, not worrying too much about constantly posting. Um, mm. But it also means that I'm really picky and I don't really uh, post unpolished stuff. What I find is usually the best thing to do is to post, like, a finished artwork and then post a work in progress as of that. Because it's for me it's easier to look back on the process and be like okay this is how I got to that point and this is the rough stages in between and this is all the sketches that I threw away the studies that I did to get to this um because people already know the end result and they're interested in how that was made rather than you know just a random sketch in the middle even though sometimes they're also really fun to to see you brought up the algorithm which is uh like that sh that shall not be named on the internet <laughs> like, the buzzword. It's, it's, yeah it, well it's such an antagonist right like it's it's mm -hmm. uh very uh very frustrating and you see things like instagram making the shift to being a creator platform instead of a like an art or post photo platform. Uh, and it's always such a challenge for people to try and keep up with that or try and find ways to get their stuff seen. Uh, how have you all in the past, since now you don't have to, or now you've taken a different mindset on it, how have you like tried to fit that? And what sort of steps do you use to maybe identify or what markers do you even use now? What markers do you use to identify that something is doing better for you or that you're having a better success on social media? To be honest, I've never thought about the algorithm at all. I mean, maybe I'm just an old guy. I really don't care. So in a sense that, I mean, I, I do care about, for example, at what time I should post my work uh, because of I my audience are mainly in the US. So I will post the time that they about to wake up or waking up. Uh, that's why I want to catch the audience. But other than that, I, I don't do those like crazy hashtag games. I just don't know how to do that. So um, <clears throat> I just type whatever that's relevant. Um, and then um, I just, hopefully I just let my work um, trend or speak for itself. But that was my old time 
uh, before this algorithm start to get crazy. Uh, so once I get to this stage of the audience, like I don't think I really need to bother with that as much. Yeah. I'm really privileged to be in a position now that I don't need to worry about um, the algorithm as much. But I remember back uh, when I used to uh, worry about my post trending and all, and it really felt like Twitter would update the, uh, their algorithm every six months. And, you know, you had to be on top of that and you would see all these posts from a different artist like, OK, here's how the algorithm has changed. Here's what you can do to take advantage of it. And, you know, keeping all that in mind while posting and everything, uh, it was really hard. Um, and now Instagram is making that change. Like they want to be more like TikTok, which is uh, not for me. So I don't know mm -hmm. what my future is going to be like on Instagram because like, I can't bring myself <laughs> to make video content like that. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's so really awkward. Hard. You have to do like the video, like the persona, like the like little TikTok, like, I don't know, the, the, the camera transitions. Like when I'm drawing, I, yeah. I don't know if you were the same, but like, I always miss like just where my pen is with like the camera because I just I can't do two <laughs> things at once. I'm too old. <laughs> I'm, I'm practically I've seen using TikToks, so. though. They're so good. Like I actually tried <laughs> making a TikTok using one of yours as preference. Cause like I was like, okay, how is she doing this? Maybe I should try doing the same thing, but it's it's hard. <laughs> but nothing, nothing else oh I can gosh. say it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's it's difficult. It's it it's a whole new skill. I don't understand how people can do that whole, like, I saw a kid record a TikTok on the bus the other day. She was, like, <laughs> doing this and then just, like, editing it and then just going like this. And I was like, what the yeah. fuck? It's fucking magic. It doesn't work that way for me. I can't do it. I have to maybe edit it on my PC or something, but I'm too lazy to do that, so that's never going to happen. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm curious, have you ever done that, uh, you know, the erasing the sketch to review the full artwork kind of pose? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good. Way I did to that a long songs. time ago. I haven't done it. Yeah, I, I should try I've that. I've never done that. I've never done that. Yeah. Okay. But you guys, um, uh, one more thing. It's really strange that uh, TikTok is transitioning towards Reels, but the funny thing is that in my country, Reels are not even available yet. Like we just don't have an option to post Reels. Not so really? I'm just like, okay, you want me to do this thing, oh. but you don't give you're not giving me an option, so I don't really know what to do. <laughs> That sucks. I mean, it really does yeah. help to use like new products and stuff like that. I found that uh -huh. when reels were just starting to get released, when I did one, they did so good. Like they, they just get yeah. a lot of views. I wish Instagram would share AdSense money because then I would be a lot more wealthy than <laughs> <I am> right now. <laughs> I would be able to buy more shoes for my outfit of the days. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the real goal is uh, your art should sponsor your shoe collection to oh, then absolutely. sponsor your art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I would like to touch on uh, is 2020 was a crazy time and very, uh, very different for a lot of people. Uh, and we all found ourselves shifting into more digital spaces due to stay at homes, due to, you know, whatever. How did you see that affect your communities or yourself on social media? How has the past year and a half, two years, really changed for you on social because of that? Oh, for me, I've got a really positive thing, thankfully, because uh, because I didn't have time for conventions or didn't have to put in a time to prepare for them, which was really my strategy for 2020. Just before the pandemic, literally in February, I had my merch drop. Um, I just started doing that and I wanted to use that uh, at conventions to do more of that sort of stuff because I really like fashion I really like um, designing things and I really wanted to take like a step into that using the uh, the platform that I have and going to conventions um, so I was really fortunate to start with that but then obviously this happened so I couldn't travel I couldn't do the events um, so that's that's something that I really hope to be able to do next year fingers crossed that we can start doing events again but uh instead i was able to invest a lot of time in uh in twitch which i really enjoyed i like playing video uh -huh. games and uh i draw on twitch as well so that's been really good because people are just at home and they they want to see like a person uh, and a lot of really great video games came out in 2020 that really allowed me to play a lot of stuff with my friends uh I uh, I spent a lot of time being very sussy baka on that uh, Among Us, so um, <laughs> I, I miss that a lot. That was so fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just I I think it's definitely made me more agoraphobic in like a, a personal sense, but 
in terms of social media, um, it's it's allowed me to to just get back to enjoying the social aspect a lot more because people are literally just online. And I feel mm-hmm. like the people that I know on Discord and Twitch are like the little the the close fan base. You know, they're they're the special kind of people that are more involved and they they're just happy to see me thrive and want me to succeed, which I'm trying really hard to do. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really, uh, I was really lucky to be able to make that shift to making new content that did really fantastic for me as well. So yeah, I miss conventions though. God, I want to go back. Oh, I just, oh, man, I want to see totally. people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, it was, yes, yeah, been a really challenging year, more challenging than I thought. Um, I didn't know that I miss traveling so much and convention so much until I, I don't have that. Um, then I, I start to to think a lot more to keep myself going. I mean, usually when uh, there'll be like six, seven conventions a year, so that's something to look forward to every few months. So um, without that, that that's become really, really hard. So in year 2020, I, I restarted my live stream a little bit. Um, Basically, because of the lockdown, I can't even interact with friends physically. So I'm always trapped in this studio. So uh, I try to entertain myself. That's why I started the, the live streaming again and start to connect with friends a little bit more for very selfish reasons, just to keep myself going and, 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 and happier in a sense. Uh, it's not easy to just face, face my two boys at home all day. It's really, really challenging. They are really active. So yeah, so that's something to keep me going. Um, at the same time, I think it gives you a lot more. I mean, I always wanted my tw- year 2020 to be something that I tried different things. Um, from the comic side of my projects, I try to draw characters I usually don't draw, um, just, just to make something more fun for myself again. Uh, so I spent a lot more time on my personal growth uh, for last year. I think it's still quite rewarding. But again, I really miss traveling, especially going to Japan, which is my favorite place to be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hope we can all go back to conventions because I've never had met either of you in person and yeah honestly like conventions like just a, a small part of that is obviously meeting like followers but mm. like and fans and all that sort of stuff but during the day that's when we're behind our little tables and interacting with other people in the evenings when the bar is open that's where we meet yeah. each other and get to fangirl ourselves so <laughs> i'm really looking really forward whenever like i know dutch comic con is starting up again and i really want to go to that if i can but uh, I hope I can see you guys there at some point as well. It would be, uh, it'd be great to like share ideas and like just mm-hmm. kick back a little bit. Cause that's our, like the very limited coffee, uh, like bar at, all, at work conversations that we can, that we really get to have because. Yeah, yeah I agree. Mm-hmm. I I'm going to have like a, uh sort of a different answer than you guys because I've actually never been to a convention so I don't actually know what I'm missing out oh oh my gosh you're missing out so much I can't (laughs) wait to go to a convention with you I really want to I'm gonna message the comic con I'm gonna be like Javi needs to go (laughs) that would be great maybe we can go to one of the future yeah that would be awesome But yeah, right. most of the pandemic, I honestly just spent uh, freelancing, doing work, um, not really active on social media as much because like I have so much work. Um, but yeah, I really missed the days before COVID. I we didn't really, I didn't understand how much I was taking for granted before um, mm-hmm. COVID hit us. Like I was crying mm-hmm. the other day because I wanted to go watch a movie and like we're back at the Delta variant and we're under lockdown again. So. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's I've been pretty consistent with like locking down as well so a lot of my yeah. friends I don't take you know I don't take it personal at all or whatever but like mm-hmm. or I don't think that they should be demonized for it um, especially mm-hmm. right now I know that they're being safe but I'm always more yeah. on the careful side and I don't know it's it's definitely mentally tough to not you know have that balance and I don't know if you guys are like this as well but I can really get lost in work and I need that outside Mm -hmm. like world to put that in perspective and remember Mm -hmm. there's more than Twitter there's more than Instagram there's more than Mm -hmm. drawing yeah Um, I really lost myself in that sort of sense where yeah like my identity as an artist was all that kept me going and like that's that's who I am in my head I like Laura was Siren and Siren was me for the majority of the, the first part of the lockdown and I had to really 
like actively remember to put like other things in my life and, and allow myself to to take the time off even though it's really tempting to keep up with the new influx of social media activity because we're all at home um mm-hmm. like it's such a, a crazy red race i think i i've hopefully done a little bit okay in like protecting that um that it's not all there is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I want to take that moment to kind of transition into finding that healthy balance. Like, mm-hmm. how do you keep your time separated from being online, dealing with all your social media, where there's the constant uh, notifications popping up and constant engagement with just like having the rest of your life? Like, how do you find that balance? How do you define it for yourself? Like, have you ever needed to take a break from social media? Do you have certain hours where you allow yourself to check on social media or are you a savant who can do it all? Yeah, I think before COVID, it was much easier, but now you're trapped at home. You just look at the screen all the time. So it's much harder. Um, But I also think that once you have a healthier perspective on social media, which means, um, if you stop chasing the algorithms, chasing for the engagement and the like, and knowing that being successful does not equal to the number of followers that you have. Um, I mean, I'm saying that because most of the very successful artists I know of, those people who are in DreamWorks Disney, they don't even have like 20,000 followers. Yeah. And they are doing so well. I mean, I, I'm telling my students yeah. that if there's 100 people who are willing to buy every shit that you draw for the rest of your life, you are done with, you are okay. Yeah, that's exactly. all you need. Yeah. So, so in, instead, I always fo- I, I mean, advise them, focus on the quality of your followers, not the number. Um, so because of that, um, I don't think you need to push yourself so hard to, to catch the latest fandoms, to catch the latest trending stuff. Um, just, mm-hmm. just draw whatever you enjoy doing and, and, and naturally and put in the passion because I think that sometimes you just rush things out uh, just because of social media naturally your quality is going to drop and and you are just not presenting your brand in in in, in, in a in a ideal way so I I tend to understand it more so I would tend to pull back myself and not to be too bothered by by the number games. Yeah, I was just gonna say like, that's that's so relatable. I mean, I keep meeting people that uh, I look up to that have had incredible long-standing careers or veterans in the field that don't know anything about social media and they'll look up to me mm-hmm. and they'll be like, wow, how are you doing that? And I'm like, you know, that also doesn't mean anything. And I see a lot of people who have uh, hundreds of thousands of followers do commissions for like 50 euros. And I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's definitely um, not every follower is the same quality, like you said. Like quality of followers versus quantity is is really mm-hmm. important. And mm-hmm. having a lot of followers doesn't mean that you're well faring at all. Like mm-hmm. I've had lower points in my life when I had a lot of followers, where you know I'm disabled, so I'm not able to have a normal job, and I mm-hmm. can't like keep up always with like I, I personally don't do commissions but I don't I only work for freelance clients but sometimes working for freelance clients was impossible for me even in my 20 like in my 20s where I was a professional I would just be living off welfare um because of that so you know follower count really doesn't say anything it's what you do with the followers and how what kind of connection that you have like I had a million plus followers and I you know I I, I didn't make anywhere near the money that people expected me to make um, mm-hmm. And that's that's really important to remember is that that you know social media following isn't the way to go like that isn't you've mm-hmm. made it um, having having one tweet that does really well doesn't say anything about your job opportunities or um, your professionalism too like you can do really well on social media but you can suck in the team um, uh, connection and like being able to work with other people so. Yeah, make sure that those soft skills in a professional setting are also developed um, and that you are keeping a balance because if you can't keep that balance for yourself, you're going to be a terrible person to work with um, as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's I feel like it's really easy like when you're starting on social media, it's really easy to get emotionally invested in the numbers. Like you feel like oh if my drawing didn't get like a thousand plus likes or something like that, then I must not be a good artist, but that really isn't the case. And even if social media doesn't work out, you can still have a traditional work in uh, in art in the art industry otherwise. Um mm-hmm. and speaking as uh, uh an artist who mainly draws my own original characters, um sometimes it does get to you like if you see a piece of fan art that's doing a lot met- better uh, than your artwork in terms of likes and retweets but you have to remember like that's a well established character people already know who that character is and their backstory people don't know your character as well they're not emotionally invested in your character so try not to take it personally um mm-hmm. you're a great artist and numbers don't define you and uh, speaking to the other point mad that you brought up uh, how much do i look at my uh, social media apps um i have notifications for everything off um i used to have them all on i found myself each time uh, the twitter notif popped on my homepage i would just click on it immediately and then spend like an hour scrolling even though i was doing something else at that point i shouldn't be on twitter but uh, having notifications off um it just i only check twitter probably like twice a day now and it's been really great i can focus on other things i'm not wasting time on social media mm. yeah same no notification is the best yeah. life <laughs> yeah i don't even have message <laughs> notifications on like mm. uh emails and and all that sort of stuff emails i only do on my computer now and mm-hmm. uh messages i uh, like even like personal messages or whatsapp or anything like even like i have my mom is like an emergency contact if she calls me i'll get through yeah. but like she like that's the exception because anything else i will message the per- Ooh, sorry i will message the person when i have time and i will check my messages when i have the time to really sit down and uh be thoughtful about them i think that's that's the one tip that i can give as well is like just don't worry about like always being available and um mm. really like the quality versus quantity again like your interaction with social media is going to be better if you're going to be like actually sitting down for it and being mindful about what you're doing there rather than just mindlessly scrolling because then mm. what you're going to get in your brain like you're not always in a, a good spot to be on social media if you go on social media with the pr- specific purpose to either interact or look for inspiration or look for motivation you're going to go in with a purpose and you're going to go in with a positive mindset and you're going to get what you want because you're looking for something if you're just looking for a dopamine hit mm-hmm. because you're getting notifications and because you're getting likes um you know i don't know maybe it works for you if you're a very successful account but even i find like with the amount of notifications that i've gotten in the past that stuff doesn't give me the dopamine hit that i'm looking for um or maybe craving subconsciously uh mm-hmm. so i just go for it and i go on it just with the sole purpose of like finding inspiration or interacting with people and really mindfully mm-hmm. responding to people that are taking the time to leave a comment and and message me personally um mm-hmm. because i find that that really like that can lift my spirit so much i i think it's very important to understand that followers your followers are not exclusive to you I think that's very important. Um that means even if you have a million followers, they are not exclusively follow you only. So when I ask my students like how many artists do you follow? Usually they'll ask they will answer like between 500 to 1000 followers. 1000 artists that they're following. And then I ask them how many do you actually spend money on? Actually buy something from these artists. They say maybe one, two, yeah, two. Yeah. <laughs> if you're lucky. So that is the reality we are looking at so so then again back to the idea build the the relationship with your followers in in terms of engagement with them rather than just a number game it really doesn't mean anything like uh, laura said that these days my main use for twitter other than posting my own artwork is just to scroll through find other uh, artwork that i like add it to my bookmarks as inspiration and that's about it not to flow at arbo but like that's what i love about da is you have like the collections and you can sort everything yes. like i'm such a categorizer that like mm-hmm. i need like everything named and filed like i'm a librarian's kid so for me everything has to have like sections to make sense <laughs> and deviant art also is easier with like its sourcing and like very clear mm-hmm. with like uh creative commons if you're looking for something like references for poses or 
um, photography references, people will always put down like, this is what you're allowed to do with it. Like, and mm -hmm. this is who made it. This is all the people that were involved versus Pinterest, which allows you to create boards and collections like on DeviantArt. But there's no way that you're going to find the source on something like Pinterest. And mm -hmm. as artists, like as artists with a lot of like um, clouds, so to speak, uh, mm -hmm. in this call, we all know how frustrating it can be to know that a lot of people are looking at our artwork on uh, on Pinterest and saving it there while it's not necessarily boosting our uh, recognition online or, or our mm, um, that's right you know our direct ability to create more artwork um, whether that's financially or through other means of support um, mm. And that's also a huge thing as well, because you said uh, there's only like maybe one or two artists that people actually spend money or support. Mm. But obviously, like buying stuff is only one of the ways that people can support you, because I make most of my money directly through uh, my reach and working with brands that are interested in my brand and like advertising on my profiles. I'm, I'm really like that. I don't know, that influencer artist <laughs> hybrid in that sense um which i'm really fortunate about because i enjoy it because mm -hmm. honestly that way people if they like my work and if they share it if they comment they're directly contributing to me being able to work with brands without having to spend any money on it and they can get something out of my work without necessarily having that back and forth even though obviously it's really nice if they want to buy a print or something like that um mm -hmm. i'm really happy if they if they want to support me in that sense but you know, I would rather work with a brand that has the money to spend it than uh, like get the money from somebody who would be better off spending it on investing in their own career. Mm. So, yeah. What is one actionable thing that you would like to tell people who are looking to improve their social media as an artist? So what's just one tight thing? Okay, I, I, can, I can say that. I mean, it's a common question that I get. Um, firstly, make good product before you try to sell it. I think to me, that's very important. Always make your art, the product, the quality as a priority. Right? Then you think about how to market it. Um, so that, that's my little advice. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I have some advice as well. I would say from my experience, community comes first and uh, it can be hard to compete on a big non-niche market, like for example, Instagram or Twitter. Um, and Facebook and stuff like that, uh, TikTok as well. I, although TikTok has really good algorithms that are boosting new creators. So, you know, there's there's a benefit to joining new platforms for sure, but also look at smaller communities, look at platforms that are more catering to your niche or more catering to peer-to-peer -peer contact. Um, places like DeviantArt is really where I found my initial community and hives like back, like it was essentially like Facebook groups um, of people like maybe, 200 people posting artwork and sharing and like uh, like supporting each other on other platforms after that. Um, it's really hard to build on traditional social media without having that community and having friends to interact with. So that's where I recommend starting before going into the big ocean of, of Instagram <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> well said. Uh, I agree with both of you. Um, yeah, you initially before you start out, you have to focus on your skills before anything else. I think that is the most important thing that you should keep uh, focusing on. You guys all had really great advice for like those things. And I think that looking at the art community as that a community, I, I think that that's really essential. And I think as someone whose entire job is social media, the biggest thing that you can do is find a sense of play, find something that you enjoy about it in a way to be creative with it. Because Every artist is creative and it's just a matter of pivoting that mindset into how can I be creative in this other sense, just like how you might want to improve your line work, how you might want to improve your color theory. Find that way for social media to make it a game for yourself or something that you enjoy and you'll be much more into it. You'll find much more success through ways that work for you as an individual, just like when you find your artist style. And so finding that, that's going to make it better. It's going to relieve some of that stress and it's going to make your community happier because you're enjoying it. It's that authenticity that we talked about earlier. That's right. so. And I want to say that um, you should also engage in your community a lot. Like if you retweet other people's artwork, if you comment on their artwork, say a few nice things to them, it'll all come back to you. People are going to want to see, uh, people are going to want to support you more. They'll see that you are supporting other artists in the community. Like just be nice to everyone and um, enjoy it. Enjoy being on social media. 
and pay it forward, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah pay forward. Definitely. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love how much information you guys have. It's so much knowledge and passion and just like heart for this. So thank you so much. Uh, we're wrapping the panel now. So really quickly, we're just going to go through in the same order as introductions and uh, just say where people can find you on social media online and any last words from you. So Arjun, let's go ahead and start with you. Yeah, you can find me as Arjun everywhere on, on, online, basically. If you don't know have, whether I have drawn your favorite art, a favorite character, you just add Google Arjun followed by the name of the character, you'll find it. So uh, <laughs> it's very it's easy. <laughs> Yeah. Siren on Twitter, Instagram, DeviantArt, um, without an E, sometimes with an E. Um, but yeah, if you if you Google my name, I think it, everything pretty much comes up. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm excited to uh, to see where 2021 is going to end off and then 2022 is going to start. Hopefully we'll be at conventions too. Maybe we'll see each other Yay! in real life instead of uh, on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you can find me at uh, Javi underscore Koso at uh, Twitter and Instagram. Um, and you can also find my webtoon on Webtoon Canvas called Do You Believe in Magic? And I'm mm. working on other stuff that I can't talk about right now, but I will tweet about it when I'm ready. Same. I <laughs> the can't NDA life. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and again, my name is Matt Buholtz. You can find me across socials at ggmattb, or if you just at DeviantArt, that's me. Um, so it was great talking with you all. Thank you so much again for your wisdom, your knowledge, your empathy, and uh, just your overall vibe of community. This is what the art world is and can continue to be. So everyone, enjoy your Lightbox 2021. Thank you for tuning in, and have a good one. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.